Hey guys, uh, making a quick video to show you how you're going to be um, using the VCarve software to do the trench and the hole on your cutting board. So I know your cutting board is going to be a little different in size than mine probably. You might use some different shapes, but overall this video is going to show you kind of how to work it through. Just remember before you even go to put your save your files, you should have myself or Mr. Harris check it over. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to be using the VCarve software. Normally, you'll have an icon here on your computer, on your desktop. Um, but uh, since I don't see it here, we're going to click down the Start menu. And I'm just going to type in VCarve. And there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and open it that way. When it opens up, the first thing you're going to want to do is create a new file. So I'm going to click Create New File. And I have my dimensions in here. My board, which I've made already, okay, my board is 11 inches wide and eight inches height, okay? Thickness of my wood is a half inch. Most of you are gonna have three fourths, 0.75, uh, but mine was a little thinner because I had to try to get the wood perfect. So I put my dimensions in there and then I hit okay. Okay, once you have your dimensions, you can always check them down here on the left. If you ever need to make any corrections to your dimensions under the file operation icons, it's the bottom left one. You can go in here and make any changes you need to and then hit okay. All right. First thing we're going to do is the trench. So I'm going to go over here. Oof, moving all over the screen there is crazy. Um, I'm going to go ahead under create vectors and create a rectangle vector. The first thing I'm going to want to do is find out where the center point is because we want to anchor our shape in the center. Okay. So find the origin of the center right there. So our X is five and a half and Y is four. So you can see up here that I put in five and a half and four. Now I want to create a radius external, so it's going to make a nice curved, curved corner. Okay. So to do this, I put in radius external, and I want it to curve about a quarter inch. Found that to look the best the first time I did it. Now from there, then I'm going to change the width and height. So here's how I want you to do it. The rectangle that you're going to make is one inch less than the dimensions of your wood. So again, mine is 11 by eight. So I'm going to do one inch in 11 minus one is 10. And eight minus one is seven. Click create. Here's our first rectangle. Okay. Now we have to do another rectangle. What I want to do is one that goes on the outside. So we kind of have a border. So what we've created is this inside line, this vector. Now we're going to create the outside vector. And how I did that is I added one fourth inch, one quarter inch. So I'm going to change the width from 10 to 10.25, adding a quarter, and 7.25. Go ahead and hit create, and there we go. So now that I have my trench on there, I think it looks really nice. I'm going to hit close. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a hole. Now with this one I did, I did an ellipse. So you click ellipse, and what I've been telling people to do is to find the vector center point. I still use the same center, okay? So we can still use five and a half and four, 5.5. Now, as far as how big I want my hole, this is how big I made it. I made it a height of four inches and made it an inch and a half wide. That's what you see here, okay? So I click create, and then I click close. And then from there, I just clicked on my vector and used the arrows on my keypad or my, my keyboard, and I just found the right spot for it. Okay. Now, for this board, I want to do something a little different for this video. So I'm going to just click, make sure that it's highlighted as red or pink. I'm going to click delete. This one, I'm going to do a circle. So I'm going to draw a circle. Again, I found the center, five and a half and four. And then I'm going to determine the diameter. So that's the full length of, from one end of the circle to the other. I don't like to do radius. I like to think the full size. So I think a two and a half inch circle would, would suffice. So I'm going to click create. And I'm going to close it. I like that. That's a pretty big circle. I think I like how big it is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it to where I want it to be, which is in the, one of the corners. And I'm going to go up here in the top corner. <clears throat> now, this looks really nice to me. And I like that it's close, but I want a little more space, okay? 
I want a little more space between the shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just find where I can give myself a little room down and a little room over. Okay, doesn't have to be exact, but I kind of like where that looks. It looks kind of nice. Okay, so I'm going to keep it there. So now that we have our vectors, it's time to set the tool path to work with these vectors. So let's start with the hole. So I have the hole made here already. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it's got the dotted line. Go to the far right and click toolpath. For this, we're going to want to cut it out all the way. So we're going to use this one that says profile toolpath. Now the first thing I'm going to want you to do is I want you to look over here at tools. And I want to make sure you have it 1 8 inch end mill. If you don't, you're going to click select. This window pops up. Pick the 1 8 inch end mill. So that's a 1 8 inch diameter a bit that's going to cut out our piece. Open that tool path back up. Now remember, mine, as it shows down here, is 1 half inch thick. So to make sure I cut it all the way through, I gave it an extra tenth, so 0 0.6. If yours was a 3 4 inch uh, piece, like I changed up here, okay, you would want to do 0.85. For mine, I have a half inch piece of wood, so I'm going to do 0.6. I'm going to go down here where it says name. I'm going to change the profile name to my last name, Singer, and what I'm cutting, which is the hole, H-O-L-E. Calculate. Whoa, it's telling me I'm going to cut all the way through. We want it to do that, so I'll go ahead and hit OK. Now to test to make sure it looks the way it needs to, I'm going to go back to toolpath here now. I'm going to select a color, something bright. How about magenta? And I can slow the speed down to about halfway. And I'm going to click... Uh, run and this is literally what the machine's going to do this is how it's running okay i can slow it down and look at it slower you can see how it starts one spot and goes around and it goes down a little more i can speed it up just to get it done and there you go so that's what i want that's good so i'm going to click close i'm now going to go back to the 2d view and now what we're going to do is we are going to do our lines okay so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click anywhere on the screen in the open space so that everything is now a solid line. Now I want to click the two lines. So I'm going to click one of them so it's pink or red or magenta or whatever. I'm going to click shift on the keypad of the keyboard and then click the other line. I want them both highlighted. Okay. So now we're going to go back to toolpaths. And for this one, we are going to do a pocket toolpath. So the pocket toolpath does like we can see on my board it cuts out a section okay makes a little pocket on our trenches so i'm going to click pocket toolpath and again i'm going to make sure i have the right tools if you have any tools in here just click remove and then you're going to go to select and you're going to make sure you have an end mill 1 8 inch bit again that's 1 8 inch across 0 0.125 and it shows us the diameter here we're doing it inches it has two flutes um, we, have, we have this already set up for the tools we have in the, in the shop but if you're a really good master to the CNC, you always make sure you have the right tools. You check how many flutes. Flutes are how many um, circular pieces you have in there. So I'm click select. Click back on toolpath. Now for the depth, I just want to do 15 hundredths of an inch. So each uh, time this bit goes around, it cuts out 5 hundredths of an inch. So 5 times 3 is 15. So this will go around three times to make sure it has it cut out. Okay. So I'm going to go down here. I like everything else the way it's set up here already. We have it set off as an offset, and it's going to offset, and it's going to climb. It, we know it's going to do three passes because I told you it's going to do five hundredths of an inch each time. We could always change that to deeper. We could even do it as one bit, but I like to take our time so we don't cut too much. We don't break our bits. Okay, Slower is better sometimes. So I'm going to change the name again to my last name, Singer. Use your name. And this one is Trench. So Singer Trench, and then click Calculate. So again, it's going to take us to our preview. Let's pick another fun color. How about yellow this time? I'm going to turn the speed down, and I'm going to hit Play. And we're going to see that it's going to run its thing. And now we can tell how close it's going to be to that other. Um, let me pause it. We're going to see how close the two vectors are going to be. If all of a sudden we notice these two vectors are really close, my suggestion is going to be to you to delete the hole and move the hole in a little bit both directions, down and over, um, to make sure you have it in the right spot. Okay, We don't want them to overlap. But this one looks really good to me, so I'm going to hit play. I'm going to let it keep going. I'm going to speed it up. 
And now it's done. It's getting little corners, cleaning it up. You can see how it works. And that's what it's going to look like. So now that I'm happy with this, we need to save our work. The first thing we're going to do is save this entire thing. So you're going to go up here where it says File, or you can click this little um, Save button. And we're going to make sure we click USB Drive. I might even name your USBs. I haven't figured that out yet. The file name, I'm going to call it Singer Cutting Board. Okay. So the overall thing is my name and what we're making, Singer Cutting Board. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to save our individual tool paths, which are right down here. So we're going to close this out. We're going to click the Save button over here for the specific tool path. We're going to make sure that we have chosen CNC Shark USB arcs and in inches. Okay, if it doesn't say that or you don't see the list, again, myself and Mr. Harris call us over. We'll make sure it works. I'm going to click Save Toolpath. Again, I'm going to make sure I'm in the USB drive. And I'm going to call it, keep the same name, Singer Hole, hit Save. Then click on the trench and click Save Toolpath. Singer Trench, Save. Now everything's on the flash drive, and then from here, we're going to take all that stuff out to the uh, CNC machine, and we're going to cut our wood, and it's going to look real pretty, and then we're going to be done. If you have any questions on any of this stuff, make sure you ask, but uh, this has to be checked by us before we move on, before you put it on the USB drive, and we're all good to go. Again, if you got any questions, don't hesitate to ask myself or Mr. Harris, um, and that's all I got for you. So we'll see you next time.